good, y'all? Welcome back to the Underground Treehouse Podcast, a podcast that discusses and reviews music of all genres. I am one fourth year host, Ruben. Joining me as always is Isaac. Hello, hello. Marcos. Hi. And Keenan. What up? This week, we are going to be reviewing the newest album from pop punk band Short Fictions titled Every Moment of Every Day. Uh, Keenan's pick, before we uh, throw it up to him, We'll give you our music recommendations of the week as well as our local beer recommendation of the week. Uh, go ahead and start us off with the music, Isaac. So today, I actually just dis- discovered the song that I'm recommending. It's by a hyper pop artist named Glaive. Uh, Glaive's pretty fucking huge in the scene, so if you fuck with hyper pop, I'm, I'm assuming you know who that is. Uh, the song is called Minnesota is a Place That Exists. Shit what? Goes, it's a dummy hard track. It, it, it's just very um uh it's like sad boy shit, but the video gives me like huge end of the fucking world vibes. So if, if you've seen that show, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh great video, great song. Check it out. So my recommendation for this week is actually an album that I was close to picking for my album this week to Ooh. review. So the name of the album is called The Woman on the Moon by Katie, sorry, it's like Bijuik and Free Cake for Every Creature. So actually, Whoa. um I looked into it. So um the Katie artist is um actually the lead singer of the band Free Cake for Every Creature. So I don't know if it was like a solo project and she just like threw both bands in there, like her and her band. Or I'm not sure if they oh, all yeah. just work on it. But it is, um, you know, like I said, Katie Bajuic and Free Cake for Every Creature. And so if you were a fan of the album Radiator by Saturn, this is literally identical to that. Very um very soft, very indie folk. It's it's so good. Um the songs to recommend off the album are right off the rip, the first two tracks, um, Mother's Records and Feels Right. So good. Check it out. Especially if you're a fan of um, If Saturn and Radiator, get on it. I just got put on an album uh, today, actually, by Sabrina Carpenter. Fucking sick-ass album. It's called Emails I Can't Read. She's pretty popular, but um, just an FYI, I might recommend this if it's still in circulation for my recommendation. Um, but it's a really good um, album. Really sad boy, pop-ish. So. Sabrina Carpenter, Emails I Can't Send. Cool. I've never even heard of her, so. Yeah, I'm sorry if you already said this. What genre? It's like pop, 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 sad boy. Just pop, just straight up pop, sad boy. So good, so good, so good. Thank you. My recommendation of the week is going to be the post punk band, the GOA Express. Um, Song specifically is going to be second time. Yes. Uh, So if you know me, you know I just fucking love uh, post punk. Anything post punk, I'm immediately gravitating towards. I think we're kind of in a renaissance era, to be honest, of the genre. (laughs) And the GOA Express is like one of the you know, younger talents that I think is really going to bloom into a top tier talent. Um, second time is my song that I'm going to be uh, recommending from them. But another good song from them is uh, Everybody in the UK is a really good one. And The Day, um, GOA Express. Check them out. All right. Moving on to our local beer recommendation of the week. This one is going to be coming from the good people at Marble. It's going to be their Pink Lemonade Lager. Oh man, super fucking smooth, so sweet. It actually tastes um like there's a good balance of both, you know, of the pink lemonade and the lager. Like when you think of pink lemonade, you think of something like hella sweet, you know, really overpowering. Um, but not only do you get like a very good pink lemonade taste out of it, the lager also balances out. So it's a really good balance of both. Yeah, it has a very good like sour taste to it, but like in a good way, like it's like a like almost like puckery, you know. Like yeah, it's like ooh, like you know, and like it tingles your tongue. Mm-hmm. Refreshing, Re- hella refreshing. All right, every moment of every day by Short Fictions. Keenan, what led you to this pick? So there's a there's actually a profile that I follow on Instagram, and it's called um, I think it's called like Sad Jams. And then what they do is this profile they put together a bunch of like new releases of the time. Um, that are usually pop punk and like emo and like bedroom pop um, style of music. And I saw short fictions on there and I'm familiar with a couple of their older songs. And so once I saw them on there, I was like, let me check it out. And sure enough, they had just released a new album. So I was like, all right, let's oh, go with this one. Perfect timing. And then it was funny because like right after I recommended it to the chat, 
I just started seeing it everywhere. Like every <laughs> like all these pop punk bands are just like, yo, go check out the new short fiction. So I was like, all right, maybe we're doing something right. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, was it just like a couple songs that you're familiar with? Are you familiar with like full projects from them at all? No, ju- it's just a couple songs. Okay. And like right off the bat, I don't I don't know which ones they are. Um, I know it's off their latest, not their latest album, but the album before this one. Mm-hmm. Maybe even been an EP, but yeah, I'm not super familiar. Cool. Did, any, did anybody else have any uh, knowings of short fictions? I did not. Um, I actually got them confused with another band called Strange Fictions. Oh, word. Yeah. Strange Fiction. Are they uh, post punk or uh, pop punk too? Like pop punk, yeah. Oh, really? If I oh, remember shit. correctly. Interesting. Yeah, no, I didn't either. I, I had no idea. Um, I, I've never heard of this band at all. So I was going to this. I mean, I had a general idea of kind of what we were going to get when I learned it was pop punk. Um, but other than that, yeah, completely blind going into this project. So Keenan sends the album over <laughs> and I see the album cover and I'm like, oh, this this is cool. Like, it looks like it might be, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's it's like a it's like a nice kind of like pink palette. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like tiny homes with like all this greenery like woven in between all these little houses and buildings and it looks like a villa slash like something like on a cliffside in Spain. Yeah, yes, slash, like, exactly. Like, like right at dusk base in Zelda or something. Yeah, you know? I was about to say it reminds me of Zelda. It reminds me of yeah. Lo-Fi Zelda. Lo-Fi yes. Zelda. Bro. Yes, that's exactly what it does. So I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, you know, this, this looks cute. I think it's kind of giving me an idea of what we're gonna get, but. Well, oh, oh, so end, then, <laughs> so then, very first song, you will never be the best at anything you try. Jesus. So we heard that, and I'm listening. I'm like, whoa, okay. It actually, you know, we get some, we get some horns in there. We get some trumpets. There's get like a, a xylophone. Keyboard. Yeah, a keyboard. keyboard. I'm like, whoa, this kind of sounds like some arcade fire type of shit. And then it gets a little bit more pop punky, and I'm like, okay, cool, cool. This is, you know, this is a good <laughs> warm up. This is a good warm up. Second track, um, don't start a band. I was like, wow, this is an amazing, amazing song. Like, it's almost post-punk in a way. Like, it reminds me of Two Door Cinema Club. It's very riffy. It's so catchy. And the way the song progresses is amazing. And then the third track comes around, and I'm like, okay, this is so cool. And then Heather comes, and I'm like, all right. Heather was pretty good. Yeah. um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, and and then – um. And then we get into the great unwashed, which we're gonna one hundred percent talk about because where the fuck did that come from? And then everything else after that was kind of like, okay. So to me, it felt like this song or th- this album started off super hot, started off you know coming right out of the gate, great songs, you know. And then I felt like it fizzled out super quick, and then it just kind of plateaued for the rest of the album. Am I alone in this sentiment? Did anybody else have any issues with this? Um, I I felt like. The, the points where I felt like where you're saying plateaus, I felt like they were just get, spoon feeding me just like regular, you know, pop punk songs. Mm-hmm. Nothing too special or anything like that. They didn't suck, but it was just like nothing spectacular about the songs that they were spoon feeding me. Uh, what was a really hardcore one? There's a song that's like really hardcore. The yeah, Great The Great Unwashed. The, the, the Great Unwashed. Unwashed, yeah. Best song in the whole album. Yeah, yeah. And then you have that. And then I thought I thought Heather was one of the songs that stuck, stuck out the most. You have... Mm-hmm. Uh, don't make a band. Don't start a band. So you have the Another songs that song. really stuck out, and then the regular songs that I feel like are fillers. They're just good. Like they're just regular mm-hmm. good songs. They're not. There's nothing special to it. So yeah, it, it went straight up, and then it went straight, and then just went straight up again, and it went straight. But at no point, in my opinion, did it go like oh, okay, this did song it, is trash. Did it go down? Yeah. No, that's a good point. I do want to clarify when I say it plateaus. Nothing about this album is bad. You know, not like I don't think there's anything that sounds bad conceptually i don't think there's anything bad like i said i think it just kind of plateaus and just kind of stays where it's at you know it doesn't it doesn't you know how you kind of have like a plateauing and then rising action for me when that plateau hit it kind of just it stayed, it it coasted. stayed straight yeah <laughs> exactly so i mean this is literally just it's your run of the mill pop punk album mm-hmm. like marco said it doesn't really do nothing for you um but the songs that did stick out obviously they those were bangers they're you know they did what they had to do they were poppy they were fun um, but everything at this point, all these bands just kind of sound the same. Mm-hmm. All the, and so all these pop punk bands now, especially like this Midwest, like you got the twinkly guitar, you know, you got the, you got some type of horn instrument right? and then you got the sad boy lyrics 
and that's that's all it is yeah. then you always have like the clips from like the movies yes. so like and the intro yeah, like, so, yep. like the intro to the album you know this sucks i'm so unhappy weekend and bernie's and then there we go and then it just <laughs> goes into the goes into the song uh-huh. like you get a lot of that and almost all the songs you get some like a clip and very nostalgic in that way yeah. it is but like nothing they don't get over like that hump I guess it don't, didn't, like it just plateaued. Original. Exactly, it just. Well, I mean, I guess it is original, but like they didn't change it up. What do you mean? They had that song I that we just true. said. Uh, what brings you to have uh, the, the Great Unwashed? The Great Unwashed. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, we could start talking about that. So, I mean, that song, that song probably would have been fine, just like as a single, because it kind of just throws off. Not throws off. Like, I'm not changing it because it is a good song, but mm-hmm. it's just kind of like randomly placed there. Right. And. So it's like, here we go. Here's all this poppy, catchy stuff. And then there's this hard ass song. And then here's some poppy, catchy stuff about how I'm going to lose you all sad. <laughs> and then it's the end of the album. And you're just like, okay, well, you didn't really have to go that hard for one song for three minutes and then yeah. go back to all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So it didn't fit the flow of it. It did saying? not fit the flow of it. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I guess my thing with it is. I'm fucking glad they did that shit because it like, okay, you're completely correct in saying, or at least I agree with you in saying that it is out of place. It's out of place as fuck. But like in some of the other songs, you could like kind of get like that, like real raw, like, cause the real rawness in the vocals, because sometimes when, you know, he's singing, you know, it's very, you know, nice and fluffy or whatever and then when he like gets real passionate then you know you could start feeling it more and more so in a way it kind of builds up through the songs and then you get this one but it's not like enough to get like a cohesive flow of mm-hmm. that build up because there wasn't like enough rawness and enough like you know he wasn't getting gritty enough in the other ones to justify this one with that being said though <laughs> This song fucks, bro. This song Dude. is so sick. No, it's, it's like a on great in a song. vacuum. This song is my favorite song. Dude, the last one minute of the song. Too? Oh, dude, that's exactly the the way it's broken up in the first half. It's just like crazy, wonderful vocals, and then the second half is like so moody and yeah. fucking like atmospheric. Like I fucking love that, but. Uh, as I'm getting a thumbs down, you're not a fan of the way <laughs> that it switched. So I love the beginning, how Same. hard it started, and then that middle part when he starts singing. Yes, I didn't like his flow, like the way he, oh, the way he the, was like delivering the it. The way he was delivering no, it. Yeah, I, I did not like that. But even though it was the same lyrics for the last half of the song, the last part that was. I love that part because then he's just screaming. Like you said, you've got to hear the emotion and feel it. Yes, but I just didn't like how he delivered it. In the middle there. That's fair. That's mm-hmm. I I could see that because Fucking it is trash. That shit was hella good. <laughs> <laughs> Every part of that song is so good, dude. I, I agree. All I was picturing was like, damn, imagine this shit fucking live. That would That'd be, be hard. Insane. Well, I think oh. this whole album would be dope live. That's what yeah. I was like. I, it has very nice upbeat energy, you know. Yeah. Like I could just picture everybody just dancing, and then this song plays, and we fucking <laughs> start throwing bows. But like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this album would translate very well live. Um, this song uh is like a Chiodos. Yes. This song, yes. I I heard this. I was like, this is one hundred percent either Chiodos inspired or like you know uh, something Chiodos would one hundred percent do. You know, like yeah. going through these like crazy uh, passages throughout the songs, right? Peaks and valleys, peaks and tch, peaks and valleys. Perfect. Um, yeah, it kind of took me back. It, it was almost like a nostalgia trip listening to 100%. something like this. Um, 100%. Yeah, when we say it starts hard, it starts fucking hard. It is straight up like some hardcore like almost thrash type of sound and he yeah. is like because you know you know uh pop punk you get you know not um i don't want to say raw whiny. vocals but you the vocals when they're raw in that way they're they they come from a different like pit in your stomach you know what i mean right whereas this was straight from the throat oh just he's like frying just dude frying and he's shit. frying kentucky fried bro <laughs> it was fucking sick yeah it's, it's like chino don't say that oh. don't curse this man <laughs> <laughs> no i but i do agree it, it's kind of a weird placement it, it's kind of weird to have it's perfect what do you mean <laughs> it's, it's, well, no, I, well, I, I how do you how do you feel about it the way it like progresses like the spot in the album like compared to all the other songs i think that's perfect because it mixes up the album it mixes up the album because uh like i don't take pop punk as seriously as maybe keenan does or anything like that so i don't analyze like like i do with the hip-hop album 
<laughs> so mm-hmm. like I don't expect like a whole fucking like <laughs> I don't expect like a whole uh uh science behind making the album. I feel like usually pop punk albums like they're just like yo let's put our heart into it. Let's fucking make music. Straightforward. Like, straightforward. Very straightforward. Boom 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 boom. That's a good boom. point. That's a good point. So like as far as track placement, so Heather, which is right before the Great Unwashed, it's a cute and corny song. Bro, this man literally so, said, I will get in a car wreck and I'll still come see your ass. Exactly. Dude, so that so was check, hard. So check this out. Toxic. So without going too much into the song real quick, just as far as like track placement, so like you got this cute and corny song, Heather, and then you get the Great Unwashed and you're like, all right, let's expect more of that. And then you go into To Leave Forever or Die Alone in South Oakland, which is like another cute and corny song. So, like, you got these two corny songs sandwiching this hard-ass song. Yeah. Expecting, because we all wanted more of that hard song, and that's all it was. But don't you think that the song right after that one, Crushed Cigarettes, was also had, like, flavors of heaviness? It, it was definitely... It was very moody. It was it, very, very so moody. even with that one, I have it here, typical corny pop-punk fashion song. <laughs> I guess because you are so well versed in it that it's all, these are almost like tropes. These are almost like you know a, a check, a, you know checking things off a list as compared to what I'm experiencing, which is it's more fresh to me. Yeah, but because I thought Crest Cigarettes was hard as fuck too, like heavy. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it had like the everything just sounded like a tune below what everything else was. You know what I mean? Yeah. E- even though it was like a, like a more a beat song compared to the great unwashed i still thought it was so i mean crush cigarettes i mean without getting too far ahead is actually one of my top songs same, same, so same, 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 same. so but like you see what i'm saying like they have like these like cutesy songs sandwiching the great unwashed and so like i probably would have been fine with either the great unwashed not even being on here or like first the last, or last. Song. yeah the, the, the last song the last song because i mean if you hear it as right off the rip as the first track you're like all right this album's gonna be sick and then it's oh, just okay, all okay poppy catchy right you know pop punk it's misleading and so yeah it was just it was just weird placement and i get it like he just had to like let it out real quick mm-hmm. but it's just it's kind of weird placing yeah i, I it, completely agree now that you put it like that it makes a lot of sense because it is like when you say the cutesy corny shit compared to this shit where it's like talking about society and like yeah. how everything's fucked you know solidarity yeah <laughs> yeah exactly oh, that it's, line delivery is so good bro. so so i mean you know it's not really like a shock but like this whole album is like corny cutesy sad yeah like that's it's typical pop punk fashion mm, right and so you know we did get this song about society and everything and it's just kind of like all right it was sick but do more with it. Do more with it. The track placement was weird. Yeah. It would have been fine. It's just like its own single. Mm-hmm. True. If anything, I think they should have uh, swapped Crushed Cigarettes and The Grain of Washed. Mm-hmm. Crushed, yeah, crushed Cigarettes. Would have been a good. Yeah, because the first four tracks we have in front of it, um, You Will Never Be the Best Anything You Tried, Don't Start a Band, Forever Endeavor, and Heather. None of those, none of those songs give you an indication of what we're about to get with The Grain of Washed. So if you had Crushed Cigarettes before the great unwashed then it would have been like whoa like okay this is getting a little dark where are we going from here and then it could have eased you in into the great unwashed I li- i'm like, I, I have no say in any conversation right now because i think it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad you think so I, i'm glad you do I, I i'm sure it works for a lot of other people too but like, we're literally just like nitpicking though because we still all loved this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a great song we're not we're not knocking the song at all i think it's more like you said it's more of the placement just placement i think forever endeavor kind of gives you a little bit of that on some of the line delivery on I want to know where he like repeats that repeats mm-hmm. that repeats that that to me that was a sign because he does say it with a little bit more grit you know and and then you know yeah two songs later then you get that so that was like my like little indication but mm-hmm. maybe that's like my own nitpicking like trying to justify my shit mm-hmm. but I mean that that's kind of how I was kind of expecting it, so that's why this isn't as left field. Even though the, it is left field, no matter how you look at it, because it's yeah. the hardest thing on yeah. the whole album. So yeah, yeah, uh, I could see that. But it's that song is so short; it's like a minute and a half. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, but I do like the. Uh, it, it, it's like the female backing vocals yes. in the background. She's she's yelling that shit too. Yep. So I could see why. I could see how that could have been like a little bit of an indication of where you're going to eventually end up. But yeah. I mean, on, on my first listen, I wasn't thinking, oh, okay. 
Yeah. Damn, maybe we'll get some hardcore on this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was going to go that way. But. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you know what's funny, too, is after I got done listening to this band, it threw me on to Anxious. Hell yeah. Dude, and Anxious yes. is so good. Nice. Yeah. Did you listen to that little greenhouse? Yeah, album of, of the year, Dude. boys. Album of the year. I don't know about yeah. all that. <laughs> album of the year. So like we said, with this song, sound-wise, it's very far off from what we get. Um but also like the songwriting, you know, the lyrics, it's, it's very dystopian. It's very reminiscent of candy, you know, what yeah. we just reviewed, like, fucking society sucks. So I just want to talk about how fucking cute the songwriting is on the rest of this album. Like, it's just so like teen boppy, like bubblegum, bubble gum, dude. Like he's talking about watching Sailor, Sailor Moon on, on DVD sets. And like, although that song was sad as fuck. Dude, that song is very sad which, despite the sound. Yeah. So the song we're talking about is the opening track, You Will Never Be the Best at Anything You Try, Surely Not. The outro to that song, that's my favorite. Those are my favorite lyrics. It's it's too long to read because the whole, the whole ending there. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, if I would have found that at 23, oh my god! Oh no! I literally oh have. I literally have. Might not same, be here. <laughs> I literally have uh, uh, those same lyrics. I never thought at 23 I feel this bad, but I never take you for granted. The times we had, Oof. dude, and all the time that I spend wishing I was dead, I'm gonna take it back now. I'm sorry that I never said. And then it just goes on that you made a life that's worth living. Man, on bad Man. days, I got friends to see. You guys read it out. Read it out. Keep going. Yeah. Next line, next line is On good hard. days, I forget to. The end is so near. Oh, that's my favorite Dude. line, Dude, yeah, that's a really good line. So I learned to appreciate the people who tell me the way to feel. I never said we had to be the best, and we surely not. Love bro, it. Love all it. that. Twenty-three at, or not, bro? That shit's fucking twenty-seven. Oh, yeah. Relatable no, yeah, right. at any age, man. Yeah. You're right, dude. It, it's just like it's so goofy too. Like he has he has the lyrics on Heather. I'll spin out on the highway at sixty mph. He doesn't even say miles per hour. Like yeah. it's just so funny that he incorporated mph <laughs> instead. Wow. How he's talking about a car crash and you hear the guitar tone start to. Yeah. You guys catch that? How the guitar <laughs> slowly started to yeah. get louder and uh-huh. louder. That's dude. so sick. Yeah, Heather. That song <laughs> nice. is. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's kind I like of. It. Uh, but the the, uh, the lyrics are just so funny. It's like, corny. It, it's goofy. and they're just so cute. Yeah, and they're goofy. It, it's you know? fun. It's a fun album. It really yeah. is. It's a fun album. It really it's is. It's a hundred percent fun. This is an album like like you want to play at La Chancla. Word. No. Hundred percent, dude. This is such that a sick, be album. sick The crowd engagement, like everybody just like up there seeing all these sad. Yeah, like lyrics. don't start a band. Like that's why I literally have like the fucking crowd would literally be singing to that song. Yep. Yo, oh, can, dude. can we talk about the cover for that single? For Don't Start a Band? Yeah, did you guys see oh, it? I didn't see it. No. So, so the cover for it, it's a, it's a picture of the band. and They're in view, and there's one member who's like looking at the camera, and the rest of the band is looking at their van, which is getting towed in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fuck. And, the lyrics to this one's actually pretty fun, too, because, I mean... It, the song pretty much just talks about what it's like being in a band and like all the hardships. Because mm-hmm. I mean, there's like, why, why did I even go to college? <laughs> yeah. Right, that was yeah. referenced a lot. It's like come student on. loans won't pay themselves. Yeah, you should pick up more hours. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then what? Talking about getting into fights with your best friends. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the hot ass van, mm-hmm. <laughs> fourteen yeah. at the door. <laughs> yeah. it, well, I loved it too because like. You could just apply that to anything that involves doing something with your friends that requires a lot of commitment, requires you to all be on the same page and requires you to, you know, kind of have to deal with each other, you know, Mm -hmm. and they're pretty much saying how it is, bro. Like if you guys aren't like fucking boys, like shit ain't easy, bro. And it's, I don't know. It's, it's a, it was such a cool perspective to see it from the other side, you know, because you normally get like. Yeah, like you know, we're the fucking best, and let's yeah. fucking get it. And they're like, "Dog, it's hot as fucking." Yeah, day. literally, <laughs> right Fuck here. This shit. I put the struggle is real. <laughs> literally, literally. But what's going on with Pennsylvanians, man? I Bro, think they're going where, through like, it. That's where all like, yeah, that's where all the good pop punk bands are yeah. from. First, Shout Saturn. Out Lingua. Oh yeah, Lingua. Shout out Lingua. Saturn, sad as shit. Tiger's Jaw from Scrant. S- title fight. Title. Rip. Title fight. Rip. Man, these Pennsylvanians, man, they got it tough. <laughs> Fuck, fucking Vinny Paz, bro. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, satisfying. Yeah, you either have like 
sad fucking hipsters or you have like conspiracy theorist fucking gun bars. Yeah, dude. I'll flip you like an omelet. <laughs> you had mentioned uh, uh, movie samples yeah. before. I love the movie sample. I think it's from um, uh, Role Models, right? Where he's like, it's a lie. You, you, uh, oh, it's a sham. It's a sham. You live and die die alone. alone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's when he's like giving the speech right to the kids. Oh, that one's in a forever endeavor. Yes. It is from uh, Roman models. And I've never heard anyone sample anything from models. Extremely underrated movie. Oh, dude. Underrated comedy for sure. (laughs) He's never seen role models. Oh, you haven't seen role models. Never in my life. It's a sham. It's a sham. It's a sham. So, of course, like, even though this album was, you know, your typical pop punk, you know, sad boy album, uh, Crushed Cigarettes was actually a really good one with the sad lyrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, like you said, Isaac, like this one was like a little more upbeat. Uh, you could definitely hear like the guitar more in this yeah. one. Yeah. And then just the lyrics either, you know, about losing a friend or break up. It's just the lyrics were so good in this one. Um Especially if you're uh, if you're a fan of the first the first song, I feel like the lyrics were definitely like on par with that sadness wise. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, this see when I was talking about the songs that didn't have any effect on me, regardless of the lyrics, like this is one of the songs that were like a placeholder for me. For oh no, definitely. Like sure. you, you hear your typical your pop typical, punk elements. Yeah, but the lyrics thing was pretty good. But it's just like I said, like the other tracks. Um, stood out to me more but this was still a good song so that's mm-hmm. kind of what sucks right now because like a lot of these pop punk bands especially like this midwest you know pop punk it's Revival. all sound it it all sounds the same mm-hmm. and it's just whose lyrics are like whose tone are you going to gravitate towards to like which one are you going to connect with because i mean you could throw on you could throw on like six different bands from now that are quote you know midwest pop punk midwest emo and it all sounds the same. You got the twinkly guitar, mm-hmm. and then you just got you know you just got the sad lyrics. Right. It's just like which one are you gonna gravitate towards? Mm-hmm. And it's not a knock. It's not a knock on the genre, but like me personally, that's kind of why like I've taken a step back from it because I was starting to realize like all right, everybody's starting to sound like real friends, knuckle puck, and modern baseball. Right. Like what? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> like they're all just wearing their influences on their sleeve. Yeah, which is not a bad original. thing. Which is cool. But, like, all these little bands are all coming up at the same time, and it's just crazy because it's, like, they're all the same band. They all yeah. sound exactly the same. Right. So, like, in the beginning of the podcast, like, how we said, like, the album didn't really, like, do anything. It's because it's, like Marco said, like, we're just getting spoon-fed, like, the same exact, you know, sound mm-hmm. over and over and over. But, you know, with this one, like you said, we do get the typical, you know, pop-punk elements. I don't know. Change it up. Let's change it up. Oh, or don't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. It's working. It's so working. that's the I thing. Like it it is working. working. I get that, but... <sighs> I mean, obviously, you could do a lot more with pop punk. Uh, I mean, you take a band like Turnover, you know, who took that formula and, you know, made it something way bigger than just the typical pop punk sound, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I guess, yeah, when you compare it to other bands that have uh, came out of the pop punk scene and, you know, moved on to a different sound or have you know, become really big acclaimed artists, then I could see why you would think that. Especially with the Grand Wash, they've proved that they can do something different, you know? Yeah. So I, I can see both sides because I can also see your side, Marcos, yeah. where it's like, nah, I mean, if you're doing it good, do it good. You know, you're going to have a following within the pop punk scene anyways. Might as well just keep doing it. Because so. they have the sound on lock. Like, there's not one track on there that I don't think didn't sound good. Well, I mean, I've kind of already <laughs> touched on my points. Uh, does anybody else have anything else they want to add? Um, no, I, just, I, I honestly just want to say listen to this album. Like, I, this was a short podcast, but, like, this was a really good album. Especially if you like pop punk, you'll like this fucking band. This is a really good album. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. if you're into pop punk, this is right up your alley. Right up your alley. Yeah. Literally right yeah. down the fucking middle. Boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Can we move on to wrapping it up? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, then. I guess we'll, uh, we'll move on to the uh, ending. Our final reviews, our final scores, and our top three tracks. Isaac, kick it off. So, like I said, I'm not too experienced with pop punk. So the things that it did do for me was pretty sick because I'm haven't been uh, overly saturated in this you know genre. Um, but also, 
I mean, I'm not the biggest pop punk pop punk fan. Like I like I like my lean a little darker. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, Allah. but Woo. with that being said, like they still killed it. Like on a technical level, they were very very good. Sonically, you know, pretty good and uh, lyrically pretty good. I mean, need I say again? This one's going fucking sixty. Crash his whip and still fucking go see your ass. Like sh- you better be grateful, Heather. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, though, uh, top three tracks would be uh, Don't Start a Band, Crush Cigarettes, and of course, The Great Unwashed. Love all those songs. They all kick ass. And my final score would be a six and a half out of ten. My top three tracks off the album would be uh, uh, the, uh, what is it called? the Great Unwashed, mm-hmm. number one. Um, and then it would be uh, 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 Don't Start a Band. And then you will never be, uh, you will never be the best at anything you try. Top three tracks right there. Cool. Yeah, and I, I would give this album a straight up seven. So overall, it's a fun and catchy pop punk album. It checks all the boxes, especially if you're a fan of the genre. It checks everything. Or even if you're new to it, like this would be like a good starting point, because you know you can understand the lyrics, maybe even relate to the lyrics. The instruments aren't too much. Um, it's very, it's very, you know, it's a happy album. You're moving your head, you know, you're, you're moving around. You're good. It sounds to me, sounds like every other Midwest pop punk sound right now. And that's not a knock on it. It's just to me personally. Um, it's just all starting to blend and it's just all starting to sound the same. Like I said earlier, but it got to the point. It did what it had to do. The lyrics were good. The instruments were good. And that being said, you know, I still highly recommend it. It's, it's a fun album. It's great. So my top three songs are You Will Never Be the Best at Anything You Try, Don't Start a Band, and Crush Cigarettes. And overall, I'm going to give it six and a half out of ten. Wow, nice. Damn, you kept the great unwashed out. I did. Whoa. I did. You're insane. I okay. Did. Oh, you're tripping. The lyrics on the other three songs are way better than that whole song. Uh, Keenan pretty much did my final thoughts for me. <laughs> I'm li- I was literally going to say the exact same thing. Um, like I said earlier, you know how I said it kind of plateaus again. I just, you know, want to clarify that that doesn't mean anything about this album is bad. You know, nothing sounds bad. Concepts aren't bad. You know, track placement between the great unwashed and crushed cigarettes. Yeah, I would flip them, but is it bad? Not necessarily. It just kind of, you know, messes up or not. It doesn't mess it up, but it kind of like throws off the pacing of the album. Um, yeah. Like, like everybody else has said, it's cute. It's fun. It's boppy. Uh, it sounds great. I think it'll translate very well to a live show. So, oh, yeah. uh, I would 100% be down to see them. I think it'll be very fun. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for me too, it's just going to be a 6.5, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, top three tracks for me are going to be uh, number three, You Will Never Be the Best Anything You Try, uh, number two, The Great Unwashed, and number one, Don't Start a Band. And psh, dude, I, I don't know what it is about this song, but I think Don't Start a Band, it's quickly became one of my favorite songs of the whole year, and it'll probably be Ooh. one of my favorite by the end of the year too. Don't Start a Band Sick. is so fucking good. So good. Okay, and that does it for our review, our review of Every Moment of Every Day by Short Fictions. Uh, Super low-key, super low-key band, Uh, so hopefully we put you on. Hopefully you guys give it a listen. Like we said, you know, it's definitely warranted, uh, especially if you're a fan of pop punk. Uh, Let us know what you think in the comments. Shoot us some DMs. Until then, we'll see you all next time. Peace. Bye.